if you're building a solid body electric guitar and you're going to be using like a, a decorative top such as flame maple or spalted maple or uh, curly redwood or anything like that, one of the ways that you can really save a little bit of money is um, to book match your own tops. Now, of course, to do that, you need to have a bandsaw that has the capacity that will allow you to cut a board at least seven inches wide. And what I've got is a 14 inch bandsaw, which I've modified quite a bit. I added a riser block, which allows me to uh, increase the capacity. Um, I think it's, it's all the way just about 12 inches. And um, I use 105 inch blades. Typically, the 14-inch bandsaws will only let you use a half-inch wide blade, but I've modified this one uh, to let me use a three-quarter inch wide blade, and that works pretty well for resawing wood. Uh, I've got a uh, ball bearing uh, guide here on the top, and I bought this from a guy on eBay, and I'll put a link down in the description below if the company is still around. And this thing works pretty well. Uh, I did have to modify it so that I could put um, a total of four, uh, these are just skateboard bearings, on either side of the, the blade up top here. Down below is just the regular, I use cool blocks. Um, and that seems to work pretty well. Um, so I'll show you how I cut these. I use a lot of flame maple on my guitars. And what, I, what I'll do is I'll look for a board that's about seven inches wide and long enough to give me at least an 18 inch long uh, book match top. And most of the time I'm getting boards that can be, you know, six, seven feet long, eight feet long. And um, I can get, you know, like four tops out of that. And uh, the board that I uh, bought that yielded, um, there were actually four, uh, blocks or four boards that I got from it. Uh, it was $35, so you know it only comes out to a few bucks per top. So as you can see, you can really save yourself some money. So what I'll do is I'll measure the thickness. And this one is about, uh, it's about 13 16 So I'll measure half of that. And then I'll mark that. And I just do an old carpenter's trick. And that's where I'll run my blade to cut them in half. I know a lot of guys like to use fancy jig setups with fences and all kinds of things to help guide the, the wood through, but with band saws, you've got to constantly shift the board as you're running it through. Otherwise, um, even when it's properly adjusted, you can run into a spot where the wood may be more dense and can cause the blade to deflect slightly and, and make your cut go crooked. So you're always gotta be watching it. What I end up doing is I just use a simple carpenter square and it is exactly um, parallel to my blade. So when I run the wood through, I can constantly shift if necessary. Um, if things are well adjusted though, if, blade tension is right, the bearings are positioned right, uh, I usually don't have too much trouble. Um, I'll start to notice a problem if the blade starts getting dull or worn out, that's when it starts to go wonky on you and give you crooked cuts. Uh, as I get close to the end, I'll grab a push stick to feed the last bit of it through to protect my fingers.
that's how I cut a basically a under ten dollar flame maple top for my guitars. And all I have to do at this point is uh, run the top side through my planer just to skim off that top surface, give them both exactly the same thickness, and get the surface smoothed out. Some people will tell you you should never run figured maple or any kind of figured wood for that matter through a planer because the planer blades will tear out pieces of the wood. And the only times I've ever had problems with that is when I've tried to take too much wood off of figured wood that's way too soft. And um, with maple, you can get varying degrees of hardness um, in figured maple. Some of it can be really soft and um, some of it can be quite hard. This particular piece is quite hard, so I'm not really too concerned about tear out. Plus, I'm just going to be skimming the top of the surface. And if I do end up with some tear out that I can't fix, that'll become the glue side. In a perfect world, you want to have the figure match up across the seam. And that doesn't always happen because figure can angle as it moves through the wood and when you cut it, that causes it to, to misalign. But one of the things that I try to do when I uh, buy my boards is I try to make sure that the figure is running straight through the wood and not at a you know steep or curved angle. That way, you uh, stand a much better chance of having a perfect book match, which this, these two boards appear to be perfect. Now the next thing I've got to do is I've got to run these edges through the joiner to get them nice and um, square to the top so that when I glue the pieces together there's no gaps. And since I've decided that these are going to be the top, I'm going to mark this B for back and then an arrow show which is the glue edge. And I did that on the other board so that there's no uh, accidentally gluing the wrong edge. Running wood through a joiner isn't that much different than running it through a planer. Um, if you're running figured maple or any kind of figured wood through uh, one of these tools, if you try to take off too much wood you're going to probably tear some pieces of wood out. So to avoid that um, I try to uh, remove as little wood as possible, just basically a skim cut. So I have uh, the infeed table uh, almost level with the outfeed, a little tiny bit below it, maybe maybe 128th of an inch, I don't know. But uh, it's going to barely take off any wood. And I'll probably have to make numerous passes before I'm taking off a consistent strip along the entire length. looking pretty good. Should clamp up nice. To glue the two halves together what I've done is I've, got, I've laid out three bar clamps and I've placed wax paper over the, uh, the clamps because when I glue these up there will be squeeze out and I don't want it to touch the bars because when it does it turns black and that can stain the wood so I want to be careful not to do that. So I'm just going to Set the board in, and then I'm going to, I'm using Tight Bond Original. It works wonderfully well. And I will just put a bead along the length of the glue edge. And bring the two together slide them back and forth a little bit to distribute the glue. Then I want to line it up to make sure that my 
figure is lining up across the seam. And then I'll just apply just enough pressure to close the, the gap. Now, the one thing you don't want to do is put too much uh, clamping pressure on here because you can bow the wood and it really isn't necessary. Um, I see a lot of guys coming up with these uh, fancy jigs that they create to glue stuff together and while I'm not against jigs necessarily, uh, it really isn't that necessary and you just need just moderate clamping pressure and I'll let that sit for a couple of hours, let it dry. And then when it's done, I'll take a chisel and I'll slice off that uh, squeeze out. Never, ever wipe squeeze out with a damp rag the way some woodworkers will show you because all you're really doing is you're diluting that glue and you're rubbing it into the surface of the wood so that later on when you go to stain it, it won't take the stain. Just let it dry on the surface like that and it will slice off nicely with a, with a sharp uh, chisel. And that's how I book match a top for a guitar.